there is so much emotion and, and care and passion behind the science. It doesn't always have a place to come across in the data. I tried at least to bring that data to life. My name is Jill Pelto. I am a climate change artist and a science communicator. For me, that means communicating things that are happening to our natural world, but doing it through art and doing it in ways that I hope are accessible to broad audiences and are really emotionally relevant to them. How I do that is I incorporate graphs directly into my paintings. I research and use real data from different science teams and I put that data directly into my art. That is usually line graphs, but can also be bar graphs, maps, anything like that. And I'll use that graph in my painting as a way to show people kind of that literal story of change. But the painting itself is telling that story in a visual way that I hope is more emotionally relevant. I really want people to connect with these ideas around climate change um, and understand and feel them and how, how they impact us in the real world. And to be able to look at data and understand that story and, and what it's really telling. Art has this incredible power of connecting people around topics, whatever that topic is. So for me, I've chosen to focus on environmental issues um, as well of stories of hope and action around sustainability. I just really want to make these topics more accessible to people. And I think that data literacy is really important. And by that, I just mean looking at a graph and being able to understand its context in the real world. Right now, I'm actually working on a large painting. This painting is going to be hanging at the visitor center for the Maine Coastal Islands National Wildlife Refuge. This painting is about seabird populations in Maine and it's specifically focusing on three different species of seabirds, the Atlantic puffin, the common tern, and the arctic tern. And so all of these birds live on different coastal islands in Maine part of the year. The data that I'm using from the National Wildlife Refuge is specifically about Seal Island in Maine and how those populations of those three birds has been changing over time. My undergrad at University of Maine, I did two majors. One was in studio art and one was in earth and climate science. I was finding those connections, those ways to combine my two passions into my future career. And I definitely didn't know what that looked like a lot of the time. As I went on, I started to learn a little bit more about how I could share what I was learning in my science classes with art students via like my paintings, via printmaking. And so I started to do that and I started to push and try to find ways to communicate with art. It was really not until my senior year that I came up with the idea of incorporating data into my work. When I finished my undergrad at UMaine, I actually decided to stay on at the university and get my master's in earth and climate science. My research for that involved working in Antarctica. I got to go down there and basically study how the ice sheet is affected by warming. Getting to do that type of research and collect the data myself, it made me better understand what goes behind data. It made me better understand like the science world and how to be a part of it. And so I've really been building kind of that perfect combination for me as a result of all of that cumulative background that I got to have. Science communication was kind of that perfect fit for me where I can work with science teams, I can communicate it, I can learn about it, but I can also work as a professional artist.
My advice for students around having their voices heard is to find your way to express yourself. And so for me, that has definitely been with art, but that can be in so many different forms, even within the arts, whether that's through music, through writing, or through something like journalism, whether that's through like your social media platform, or whether you are more interested in math or science. I think that we can use our voices in whatever kind of field we are most interested in. If it's something that you're passionate about, just figure out how do you feel comfortable sharing your voice and who do you feel comfortable sharing it with. My advice for any students who might want to pursue a path like mine is to figure out what your direct passion is and bring it to the environmental field. Don't be afraid of reaching out and asking for help or advice. That kind of mentorship and collaboration has been one of the most powerful things for me as a young artist trying to start her career in something that is really niche or like really specialized and specific. I hope that if you guys are doing this data art project that you can make it about you as well. Choose a topic that you want to learn more about, that you're interested in or passionate about, whether it's affected you personally, whether it's something that, you know, has affected others you know or just something you've read about. I think it's really cool to use this type of project and the choice around it to make art about something that you can share with, you know, the world or if it's just your friends and family. Having a voice around something that you care about is really powerful. And so use this project in that way. This project is about a creative story. It's not about being technically a good artist. It's not about being able to paint something realistically or well. It's about being able to share your voice and think about these topics and tell their stories. It's a way for you to learn about, about something that you want to learn about.